What is up, my nerds, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerdy Mind. Zach, thank you for coming back. Thank you, and Shane, I love the enthusiasm and the rocking out, dude. Yeah, man, I love that thank intro. Thank you for the rocking out, dude. Yeah, dude. Uh, uh, it's good times, good times. Um, so, man, uh, I got I got something I want to talk about. Some a big, big topic that I think you will enjoy and give a lot of feedback as well. With I want to talk about the whole gatekeeping in and. Anime. I want to talk about the, the the whole like issue with as us as an anime community, why we gate gatekeep each other. Like, what is what is with it? Like, it, and I'll give it more specific so the audience understands. Um, I watch Dragon Ball Z. I watch Naruto. Watch I watch a little bit of One Piece. I watch now watch Jujutsu Kaisen, and a lot of these are mainly like Shonen Jump animes that are been created with mangas and stuff like that. And I've been told, well, if you only watch Shonen, you're not really an anime fan. You need to watch the most obscure, backdoor, off-the-wall animes. And if you don't, then you're not a real anime fan. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I'm so glad you I'm so glad you asked. I'm so glad you asked. So when I I have a I have like five stories right off the bat. This is what in, in case in case people aren't accustomed to the dark and seedy underworld of the anime and nerdy community like nerds can yeah. be super gatekeepy just like anyone else can like you know how like if you wear a yeah. band t-shirt and then somebody comes up to you and it's like name three of their favorite like that is that can be a lot of what anime is like so at my last job when i started i was like i didn't really know people it was it was mostly people who were like a little bit older than me you know 40s 50s uh which is fine like you know i you know, I'm used to not having like a ton of like nerdy people at my office. And then there's this one dude who's like really cool. And he was the IT guy and he came by and he was wearing like a, like a, it wasn't like a nerdy shirt cause we were working, but it was, I think he was wearing like a, his like lanyard was nerdy or something like that. And so I was like, Oh, Hey, like nerdy stuff. And, uh, and he was like, yeah, nerdy stuff. So then I ran into him later in the kitchen and I was like, Hey, so like you a nerdy dude. And he was like, yeah, man, like what animes are you into? And I was like, you know how like when somebody asks you stuff, like your knee jerk reaction is to just name like the big titles, because, you know, if I throw yeah. out a, a lesser known anime, it's more likely to not get picked up. Whereas if I say like, oh, you know, you know, DBZ classic, not like you said, DBZ, Naruto, you know, Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, uh, My Hero Academic, you know, throwing out the big names first. Yeah, and, yeah. and and I have no like I know that Shonen is not the only way to anime. And I know that it's kind of like it's kind of like being a fan of Taylor Swift. If you like music, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing bad about it. But like, because it's a popular thing, people tend to like roll your eyes and be like, Oh yeah. Okay. GBZ. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so like immediately he rolled it. He was like, he goes, Oh, are those the kind of animes you watch? Okay. And then he stopped talking to me. He like, he was on his lunch break. So he, like, he was like, okay. And then he like went back to like scrolling on his phone. Like he immediately picked up his phone and was like, Oh, Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh those are the kind of animes you watch okay and he like picked up his phone and i was like yeah what are you into and he's like you probably wouldn't know it and then he just like stopped talking to me uh, and it's and it's like that is not uncommon in the anime world um and i hate it because like you, there's just like if 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 i were to be like oh you don't watch shonens <laughs> And then, like, roll my eyes at people, like, I would be justifiably considered an asshole. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But, like, if it's, but in reverse, like, look, sorry if I like the long form anime. And, and yeah, sure, it comes with filler and it comes with a lot of that stuff. But, like, I think that, I think that they are both justified in their existence. I think shorter animes, the 12 to 24 episode animes, are great, consumable. You'll get a quick, decisive story that's told uh, an arc from beginning to end maybe a second arc if it gets the second season and that's and it tells a cohesive story i think that's totally fine i love that i love that it gives them the time to cut all the fluff and it's there's no like extra fat on the bones it's just right to the story however i think that people forget that there are things that shonen jumps do that just can't be done in other forms of of i would say any form of television because how often excuse me how often do you get like I don't know, a thousand episodes to tell a story. Like these are, these are stories that are now long form stories that can only be told because they're so long. I, I know real talk. I have cried in at least three times in Naruto. Um, like there are times that like attack on Titan gets me consistently. Um, yeah. 
and and it's because they're able to tell these stories that that can only be told through long form storytelling and by being committed to these characters for years at a time so that when they you know when they die or something bad happens or something emotional happens to them i'm far more connected to them than i would in a 12 episode anime now that's not to say that i don't grow attached to those people and it's not to say that those aren't great because i can knock out a 12 p a 12 episode anime in a day especially if i i like to put things on like 1.25 speed especially maybe because it's like all right an anime is 20 up 20 minutes after all the fluff uh you know the intro the so it's like all right cool you get 15, 20 minutes of the actual anime. If I put it on 1.25, that drops it down to like a 12 minute anime. And I'm like, a 12 minute anime. We're gonna be done this series by lunch. <laughs> so they're like, they're like, yeah, I really gotta I really gotta fit that guy. Like, ah, and then like <laughs> you're like, all right, it's I'm really absorbing everything. Quite that bad. It cuts out a lot of like, especially when I'm watching One Piece, because again, there are so many One Piece episodes, it suddenly feels much more manageable to like consume one piece when it's like oh okay well each episode is roughly 10 to 12 minutes i can get five episodes done in a day if i'm just like cruising and if i really want to get them done i can get like 15 to 20 episodes in uh, and be fine with it because that's yeah. like two or three hours and it's like but you've consumed now like an entire arc yeah it just it throws me off because i i mean i guess it comes down to because like our generation now is coming into its own like we're we're 30 you know we're we're adults like adults adults now like we're getting up there in age and then like so now we're kind of like creating the like the non-stigma of like anime is cool you know mm -hmm. and but we weren't cool for a while <laughs> You know, if, I still don't know if I would call us cool. I just call yeah. us common now. <laughs> yeah, okay, I mean? like, common. Yeah, it's it's more it's, common. Like, it, yeah, it is the norm now. If you to watch anime or to watch these certain nerdy shows, then you watch them in secret when you're a child or a teenager, you're or like, in your car like, in the parking lot at work with your best friend because. Yeah. People judge you when you watch anime, Shame. so we go out to our car. <laughs> Pretty much, like, it's like the fucking, uh, what is it, the uh, adultery, like, the easy A thing. Like, we're like, shame, yeah. shame, like, <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm shamed because I watch anime. So, like, it's it's crazy, like, you know, you think now that it's the most common thing, like, now I, I just feel like I feel uncool again because people are like, oh, you're watching JJK, even though everyone's watching it. You know, and everyone, I'm not like the only person who says it's one of the greatest animes to date. Yeah. A lot of people are saying it. So it's just crazy where people are like, ew, like you got to watch, you know, server, server kitty 19, you know, <laughs> that's 12 or, episodes. It, it like realistically, it, it like ones that I just can't pronounce because I don't speak Japanese and yeah. they are only Japanese named. And I'm like, yeah. all right, I'll, I'll try, but please don't judge me if I say it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and like i i don't know like i just hate that us as a commu anime community or us as just a nerd community you know we we as growing up we were ridiculed and made fun of because we liked lord of the rings we loved harry potter or we loved anime and and now we're doing it to our own people <laughs> so it's like well, here's my rebuttal i think that there's a uh, <laughs> i know you don't follow uh like uh, Dimension 20 and Roll 20 as much, or Dimension 20, uh, Brennan Lee Mulligan, yeah. all that as much. But he has a great quote that he talks about that one of his college professors says that personality predates, uh, what is it? Personality predates uh, uh, something else. Basically saying, like, if you're a fascist and a, a, you know, piece of shit, somebody like that, you were probably a bully and an asshole before you were anything else. Like, it, it's not like you got power and suddenly you were corrupted by it. You were always kind of a dick and a bully and then you got power. I think it's the same in the anime community in that, like, there are people who are in the nerdy community at, at, on the whole who it's like, okay, you were always kind of an asshole, but you didn't fit in with the jocks who and you don't like the sports ball and stuff like that. So you end up in the anime community and then you get bullied for it. And then you think that bullying is just an okay thing to do because, well, I got bullied because I wasn't into to Ravens football. But so now I'm going to be an anime and you're like, oh, you like One Piece? Oh, yeah. Well, tell me Luffy's favorite color. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, same thing. And I think that communities always kind of are going to have those apples who who are like, 
oh, you, you like uh, Shonen Jumps? Well, <laughs> I didn't realize I was talking to a, like a loser who couldn't watch a real anime. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. there's always going to be people like that. I, I've i learned that there's no way to like rid the community, any community of that. But the best thing you can do is just ignore them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, I, I do ignore them. But like I thought it'd be just a, a decent topic to talk about because I'm sure there's a lot no, of yeah. people out there who if like, you are a person who way. does that and you're listening to this podcast, you're a piece of shit. Stop doing that. <laughs> like let people just enjoy things yeah, at the rate they that. enjoy things. Uh like I always try to now these yeah, days, I, you know, like like the new Dragon Ball Daima uh announcement. Have you mm-hmm. have you have yeah. we talked about this? Mm-hmm. Where it's like they kind of cheat they're cheating uh, up all the DBZ yeah, yeah. characters. So it's like the new Dragon Ball mm-hmm. series that's gonna be coming out. Uh, and and it's it's very similar to GT, except it's all the characters that get like turned into kid form. So it's like they're all getting reverted to a kid form. Yeah. It's not for me. It's not for me. I I mean I'm gonna yeah, watch it. I'm gonna give it a chance because I I I trust them. You know I, they've done great so far. And and I mean Dragon Ball Z obviously has like ups and downs and stuff like that. But uh, on the whole, I've been a Dragon Ball fan my entire life, so I'm going to give it a chance. But that said, it's yeah. like, do you know who your audience is? Like, in my opinion, your audience is, at this point, 20 to 30-year-old men, maybe older, who have grown up on this, and they just want to watch grown dudes punch each other in the face, bleed a bunch, shoot beams into each other. If you can cut off limbs and shit, we'll be here for it. And going into, like, a chibi or more kid version, I understand, is, like, possibly going to sell them more stuff make them more money and make them a more profitable fan franchise but i'm so tired of profits driving things rather than like the reason that i'm here like if you can make a new kid series yeah. don't do it with my dragon ball <laughs> uh, but that said yeah if people don't enjoy it that's that's there. like i i don't enjoy it but if somebody does enjoy it i'm not going to hate on them for enjoying it i hope that people do genuinely like it I just mourn the loss of the thing that I wanted to watch because I wanted to watch Goku go ultra wolf mega Saiyan. Like I I don't want to watch like kid Goku doing his like kid thing out there. But if kids like it or if somebody likes it, I'm not going to shit on it either. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I just personally, it's not my preference. Yeah. And that's like, um, a lot of people's favorite and, MA is Attack on Titan, and I have nothing against Attack on Titan. I love Attack on Titan, but I just can't watch it because it just brings me anxiety. <laughs> so, <laughs> it does. I don't it... watch it. So, um, it, it's just my preference, and and I don't hate on people like, huh, you watch Attack on Titan, loser. You, right. you, you Why know, don't you pick like, up a real anime? Out there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. Like, I'm trying, I, I do ignore the people but i think i just have to be it has to be said uh not that i have a huge platform to speak on it but it just i feel like us as a community a nerd community we need to like not put each other down for what we like you know we all like different things yeah um but there's probably like like you keep telling me to watch one piece and you're not the only person who ever told me that you know my cousin wants me to watch it and i just, just like you know i i'm not that i'm like i'm never gonna watch it. it's just like i'm not gonna do it right now you know, I'm not going to just do it right now. And to some people, they're like, but you have to. It's, <laughs> it is the greatest anime ever made. And I'm like, okay, but, like, there's other See, animes that are made. The the reason I like One Piece so much, and I understand that it is, like, a, a legendary, you know, it's one of the big, the big, like, most popular animes of all time. It's, it's, it is anime royalty. Um, but, like, for me, the reason I watched it uh, I I had a variety of reasons. One of my friends is a big One Piece fan, same as you, like all of the stuff. But like also personally, it's a long form anime, which I tend to enjoy. Uh, it tells good stories where it, it does that anime thing where it's like super like cheesy and kitty. And you're like, I don't know if this is for me. And then it gets like super emotional or intense real quick. And you're like, oh, maybe this is for me. Um, it's about pirates. It's about like, like, like all of those things check personal boxes for me. Like a long form anime about pirates with like good emotional beats but also like still cheesy fun like that checks a lot of my personal boxes and then you get into the like one of my friends really wants me to watch it it's 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 anime royalty like those things are all like icing on the cake for me but there is like solid cake in there for me Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and 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 that kind of goes into like um watching a dub or sub stuff 
Mm-hmm. You know? Oh yeah, this is the age old debate. I get it. I get it. You know, and anime is made in Japan. Like it originates from Japan, and and people who like in the in the anime community say like you don't watch it in sub, you're not a true anime. Man. And and then I feel like a lot of other people claim like, yeah, I mean, I would watch it in dub, but voice actors suck. I'm like, but you don't understand what they're saying other than reading the subtitles. So how do you know Dude, if they're good or bad? You're like hitting just like, I don't know. every beat that I, okay. So like, it's no, I've said it on the podcast a bunch. I'm, I'm an American voice actor. Um, and so like, I will tell people I'm a voice actor. This is like the the curse and the blessing that is being a voice actor. When you're a voice actor and you tell people you're a voice actor, a lot of people think, like, some people are just like, oh, that's neat, that's cool. But then, like, especially nerdier people are like, you're a voice actor? That's so awesome. And I'm like, thank you. It's really fun. And then people take a lot of interest when when you say you're a voice actor. There's a lot of, you know, when you say you're an accountant, people are like, oh, nice, an accountant. When you say you're a voice actor, people are like, tell me more. (laughs) Um, And I have had people, no joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah who are nerds i tell them i'm a voice actor they're like that's so cool we talk anime we talk nerdy stuff like that's awesome i i you know what do you do what are your favorite things like blah 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 and then i'm like yeah yeah and we have this really nice conversation and and i have had so many people then go on in that same conversation and be like but i don't watch i don't listen to dub because it sucks you know sub is is way better and english english dubs are shit and i'm like so you think my job is really cool, but you also think that I suck at my job. <laughs> think that everyone in my field sucks at their job. And here's yeah. the thing. Here's the exception to the rule, because I have decided that there is an exception to this rule. If you speak English and Japanese and you think the Japanese dub is better. Cool. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Uh, if you think that the Japanese yeah. dub is better and you don't speak Japanese, you just like the melody of Japanese language better than you like the melody of English language. There's just... Yeah. Also, to defend English dub, because people... people, Okay, you've hit, you've hit one of my hills. <laughs> as an English I dub... I yeah, I was gonna say, I have a... As an English dub voice actor, I want everyone to know how much goes into making an English dub sound as good as possible. So the English dub voiceover artist has to know their lines, have their lines in front of them. A lot of times they're cold reads. Most of the time they're cold reads. Um, You have to match the lip flaps so that you're matching the, the, so that when there's a pause, I'm pausing when there's whatever I'm, I'm so that it looks right. And if you don't, and if it's off by like even a quarter of a second, you have to do it again. You also, when you're an actor, you have like an emotional like trick bag. Like if I'm if I'm really angry, I'm probably gonna be extra breathy and I might speak faster than I normally would. And if I'm really sad, I might slow down and drag my words because I can't even comprehend what's happening. You don't get to do that in anime. And Tony Oliver, who has taught me a bunch, I've taken a lot of his classes. I've learned a lot from him. I've listened a lot to him. If you are getting into voice acting, listen to anything Tony Oliver has to say, because he is a golden goose and he just likes golden eggs all day. Um, He has said there are no commas in anime. He says it constantly. If you're if you're in the booth and you're recording and you like take the because the script will have commas in it but don't stop for them. <laughs> the The only time we stop or take a break is if there's like a little hitch in the script, which indicates that there's like a uh, the character stopping moving their mouth or they're switching angles or whatever. So I have to, I have to do the acting. I have to not be able to use my emotional tool belt because I can't slow down. If, if I'm doing, if I'm really angry, unless the character is talking slower and the mouth flaps are moving slower, I can't slow down or speed up or I have to fit the rhythm that has already been set by the Japanese. And then on top of that, on top of what I'm doing, which is trying to match the lip flaps, trying to match the emotional, the emotions. I also, we, they watch. So what'll happen is if you're, if you're dubbing, you have two screens in front of you usually, or a screen, you know, with a script or like an actual script in the screen. So you'll have the script, you're looking at the script and then they will play, they will, they'll do beep 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 and then they'll play you the japanese so that you can see what the original japanese sounds like and looks like and you know the emotions that are coming out of the original uh voice actor and then 
they they go okay cool and then it goes boop 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 again and on the fourth boop i start recording so like it's just like boop 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 ah, and then boop 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 and then i do my thing um you don't have the the opportunity to like really milk a character or like play it to the way that you want to play it and being an actor is playing pretend authentically it's what richard horvitz says he's also amazing again if you're looking to get into voice acting listen to richard horvitz um he he talks about like playing pretend and playing pretend fully and and what that means and you don't get to do that as much with anime because you're you're trying to fit in parameters that have already been set for you now on top of everything that i'm doing as an actor there are also people who have who are trying to translate the japanese into american or english or or or, you know what i mean um and they are trying to the reason i say american is not because i think american is spoken but because there are cultural references that like they'll make a a a cultural japanese joke that has to then be translated in for an american audience or for a british audience or for a german audience or for a french audience and so like the script writers are heroes in my opinion because not only do they have to rewrite it so that it fits the like timing of the thing still make it make sense still make the jokes funny enough that they that they hit even though it's a japanese culture joke that just wouldn't make sense here on top of all of that they have to do it in a way that they then have to read it out loud to themselves to make sure that it's that it the 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 beats hit the same beats so like you could write a script and if the mouth is doing this and then the, your words are doing this it doesn't it doesn't hit like they're heroes in my opinion so like yeah. then people will be like english dubs suck and i'm like english dubs are remarkable especially considering the parameters that everybody has to work within it, it's remarkable to me so uh yeah i've had people come up to me at parties tell me that being a voice actor is amazing and then shit on it and i'm like do you speak japanese and they're like no but the the japanese is way better and i'm like then you just like the melody of japanese language and you like being able to read like <laughs> that's it mm-hmm. like you're it's not that one's better than the other it's that you understand one and and this is what i think a lot of people who like especially more like intense anime where it's like a fighting anime it sounds cooler to just have somebody growling in the like mm. the japanese men voiceovers are remarkable they're all incredibly talented people and they have these like big oh deep voices that really inspire you to and like so yeah like if you don't understand that what they're saying is like if you don't give me my milk back i won't be able to make cereal <laughs> like that yeah. that sounds cheesier in english because you understand that it's cheesy <laughs> like your brain is comprehending the language part mm. of it and being like oh that's not my favorite but when you just hear them being like like growling and and like speaking japanese which you don't understand then like yeah it sounds cooler <laughs> because you're not processing the language side of things. However, yeah. like if you do speak Japanese and you prefer Japanese better, that's fine because at least you are informed on both sides and can make an informed decision other than just like, eh, English sounds dumb. <laughs> so that is my rant. You've hit one of yeah, my hills because I get it all the time. It's like, yeah. And it's like, for me, it's like, Do you actually like the Japanese, or do you just feel like, as an anime fan, you have to watch it in Japanese? Right. Or are you one of those people who thinks you know, that, like, like... Like, you feel like you'll be ridiculed. It's... it's. Okay, what you're saying? Sorry, sorry. There's, I think there's a little bit of lag today, but um, it's like one of, when, when you get those people who, like, feel like, again... It's a gatekeeping thing. It's like, oh, you don't watch it in the original Japanese? Well, you're not a real nerd. And you're like, okay. <laughs> like, it's just supposed to be accessible. It's not, yeah. you're not getting any golden stars at the end of it. You don't get up to heaven and they're like, you watch the whole thing in Japanese? Well, you get a special room in heaven for that. Like, yeah. it's just, it's just your preference. Yeah. It, and, and that's the thing. It's like, um, the whole me personally i think it's, it also comes to like laziness for me i'll be honest it, it comes with laziness for me like i i just like to enjoy the content i don't want to have to read the whole thing the whole time like i sometimes i'll be chilling on my couch watching an episode of jjk and I, i'm like starting on my phone doing some other thing that i'm trying to like do like make content for tiktok and instagram for the podcast and 
while I'm watching the show because I can multitask, you know, and and I don't want to have to be like so focused on the TV on saying, hey, what did they say? I miss it, you know. So I think that's where I, how I feel with the whole thing. Yeah, I, I I lean in the same boat as you do. I have ADD. Uh, I don't hide that fact. So like, I I am not against when I I'm very impatient also. So like, I have watched anime. I've watched Naruto up until I like hit the the point where it was like no longer English dubbed, and I was like, I'm enjoying this too much. And then I switched over to Japanese, um, with with sub. And I will say, it's really hard for me to go backwards if I've started in one. Like, if I've started in English, it's really hard for me to then switch to uh, Japanese with sub. If I started with sub, it's hard for me to switch yeah. because I, I grow attached to to the voice actors and the performances that are being given. But uh, but but on the whole, like, it, it's just I have ADD. I, I want to be able to look down at my phone. I want to be able to, you know, if I have an idea for, you know, a, a, a thing that I'm working on, I, I have, I put so many irons in the fire that like, sometimes I'll just be like working on a D and D campaign or something. And I'm like, Ooh, this is a good idea. And I, I want to be able to not like, I want to be able to go because like, again, with anime, there can be a bit of filler, even in like, not the actual episode, but there's just fluff. There's just time that they kill a lot. And so sometimes I want to just be able to look down on my phone yeah. without feeling like I've missed something important because I wasn't able to like read the, the sentence that popped up real quick. It just depends on the mood that I'm in. And I, I, I think people box this. So this happens in wrestling too. I'm a big pro wrestling fan. You know that, uh, that like right now there's two big companies, which is WWE and AEW and like both they're different in different ways. WWE is very story driven and the wrestling is like good, but not great. Whereas AEW, the wrestling is great, but not good. But the storytelling is is not always the best. It doesn't have the most coherent storyline. Sometimes it's just about watching cool guys do flips and shit. Um, and people will just go at each other and be like, WWE is better and AEW is shit. And then people will be like, AEW is shit. W or w AEW is great. WWE is shit. And I'm sitting over here being like, um, they're both awesome. Sometimes I want to watch a good story. Sometimes I want to watch guys do flippy shit. Like, it's cool. It's the same thing with the Xbox and PlayStation Wars, where people will just like, for whatever reason, people feel like they have to define themselves by the group rather than enjoying everything. And I feel like that's just like, it, it's just a bad way of living because if you're only an Xbox guy and you're like, fuck, fuck PlayStation, I, PlayStation sucks, Sony sucks, I don't like, then like you're cutting yourself out of God of War, Spider-Man, you know, stuff like that. If you're same in reverse, you know, if you're cutting yourself out of like uh, now at this point, Bethesda games and stuff like that, like just enjoy everything. There's no there's no barrier to it other than some dude named Tommy yeah. who's saying that you're a piece of shit if you play PlayStation or if you watch Jujutsu Kaisen or if you, you know what I mean? Like, just enjoy things. Just enjoy things. <laughs> yeah. What is up, my nerds? I want to introduce you to Anime Town Creations, your ultimate destination for anime-inspired vinyl decals. Are you a diehard anime fan who can't get enough of your favorite characters? Do you want to carry your passion for anime everywhere you go? Want to level up your gaming setup with epic vinyl decals? Need a desk pad that's not just functional, but a work of art? Look no further, because AnimeTownCreations.com has got you covered. When you shop at AnimeTownCreations.com, you enjoy these fantastic perks like exclusive designs, premium quality, endless possibilities, and customer satisfaction. At AnimeTownCreations.com, they bring your favorite anime characters and themes to life like never before. Deck out your credit card with stunning custom designed anime decals that showcase your unique style. Transform your gaming console into a masterpiece with their high quality vinyl decals your opponents won't know it hit them. Work or play in style with their exceptional desk pads featuring vibrant anime inspired artwork. Are you ready to join the Anime Town Creations family? Visit their website today and explore their amazing collection and stay up to date with their latest creation. Don't miss out on the chance to turn your world into an anime wonderland. With the coupon code NERDY10, get 10% off your first purchase. That's NERDY10. AnimeTownCreations.com. Bring your love for anime to life one decal at a time. <laughs> I'm good for now. Sorry, guys. There was uh, some... Technical difficulties, as I'll explain to Zach, I, I pay for like the high speed Verizon, and for some reason, it decides it wants to take a poop whenever I want to 
do the podcast. So the podcast. I tried to convince him to do the intro again, uh, but he wouldn't do it. <laughs> 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 yeah. So sorry, Zach. I, now I'm in the green. You're not glitching out. I'm yeah, not yeah, delayed yeah. for you. So I can see your face in not eight bit form, which like, don't get me wrong. Video game Shane's really cool, but like, you know, I thanks. love your beautiful face. It's, thanks, it's gorgeous. I want to look at thank it. Thank you. Thank you. So you were talking about, we were talking about, um, essentially obviously the gatekeeping of anime so we got to the whole point of you know you don't have to just watch you can watch shonen and be fine with watching anime you don't have to yeah. watch like some obscure thing or and also we were talking about sub versus dub and and you're kind of getting to the point of like wwe you know watching uh just watching the thing of them like slamming people on tables and shit versus sorry the the computer glitched out so i didn't get all of what you were saying so. <laughs> not at all what i said okay. you're like, yeah dudes uh, uh getting slammed into tables and shit it's it's really annoying how does this tie into anime oh <laughs> uh, no it's just anytime anytime that there's anyone who like especially when there's a band wagon effect where there's like when there's like two choices people tend to fall into one camp or the other when there's really no there's no reason to so like mm -hmm. if you're a wwe fan you can be an aew fan if you're if you're a playstation fan you can be an xbox fan if you're a if you're a, a, a sub fan you can also be a dub fan like you don't you don't have to just take one form of a thing and then make that your identity. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. I was way off. <laughs> you were way off. You're sitting there with a the glitch and you're like, I don't really think he's <laughs> on topic anymore. <laughs> God damn it, internet. You see what you do to me? You make me look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's um, funny though. Yeah, but for yeah, for me, it's just one of these things that it's like, it's just enjoy what you enjoy. If yeah. you enjoy a thing, that doesn't mean that you're like, it doesn't mean the, the, because you like it better than the other thing doesn't mean the other thing's bad. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, like it's we've talked about this, I think, in the past, even on a podcast episode, maybe where like I try really hard these days not to. You know how people will be like, oh, you like apple pie rather than pumpkin pie? Well, it's okay. You can make shit decisions. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I try to, like, not do that anymore because, mm -hmm. like, I've just realized that, like, I, I'm not right about everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, if I have my opinion of, like, I like this better than this, then, like, that's fine. That's my, right. my opinion on it. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean like, like, and I'm cool with like, you know, I'm a genuinely sarcastic person to hide that I'm actually authentically a pretty nice person. Um, so like, I'll do that where I'll be like, oh, you like, you don't like, you know, peppermint milkshakes. Well, it's okay. Tell me about your wrong decision. But like, yeah, yeah. On You're the whole, I, it's, it's sad. On the whole, so, I'm yeah. joking. But there are people who like legitimately mm -hmm. will like, will like stand with so like, again, Sony fans will stand with PlayStation over Xbox, like to the death. And I'm yeah. like, they don't, they don't really, like it. They, they want everyone to enjoy every product. It's funny to me when like game developers will be like, go enjoy this on any system, like whatever works best for you. And people will be like, but not Sony or like not Microsoft. And it's like, just go let people enjoy what they enjoy and do me a favor and shut the fuck up. Yeah. I mean, and even they've come into the whole thing of uh, doing cross platform now with a lot of yeah. games because not everyone can afford all the consoles and not everyone can like it all the, the subscription services yeah yeah regardless if like okay i made the choice of buying an xbox and people are like well you made the wrong choice because right. we're playstation people over here so it's just like now now companies are like you know what fuck it like we're just gonna let people have our like we create our own service so everyone no matter what if you have pc xbox or playstation you all can join together and have fun like it doesn't yeah. matter yeah like hey guess what i have a playstation 5 i have a xbox series x i have a pc that i game on excuse me i'm, I'm all the water is making me so burpy <laughs> <laughs> i have a pc that i game on i have a switch that i game on probably more than anything if i'm being perfectly honest i switch has been the thing that is the most thorough through my life like i have consistently mm. played switch since it came out and it's like it's always a, a thing that i pick up with like my wife where we'll play like Mario Kart or we'll always whatever. And like, and then I'll get like a boulder skate and I'm like, sorry, switch. I'm putting you down for like four months, but don't worry. You'll be back. <laughs> Dude. Side note. I saw Hogwarts legacy on switch and it looks like poopy. It looks really bad. It looks like a PlayStation three game, which is, you know, 
it's not bad. If I had never seen the original Hogwarts Legacy, I would have seen that game and I would have been like, eh, it definitely could use some loving, but like, but still very cool. I, okay, so like the the reason I'm being kinder on it than usual, which is not my my normal cup of tea, because I I am an obviously a huge Hogwarts Legacy fan. I'm a huge Hogwarts mm-hmm. fan. Um, I for the this was a dream come true game because I got to anytime I want to go back to Hogwarts now, I can just go there, and they have a big deep. Again, we've talked about this. It's not just like like the movies where you cut from scene to scene and you get a glimpse of Hogwarts throughout the, the process. You can mm-hmm. walk from the potions classroom to Dumbledore's study and then fly into the forbidden forest. And like, you can anywhere that was ever described in the books uh, regarding the, the castle itself, pretty much you can get in. Um, so like for me, it's, it's a win. Um, my buddy's mom, my buddy is also a huge Hogwarts fan and his mom is also a, big, a huge Hogwarts fan. So yep. she's not like a, a gamer. She's, you know, I think 50s or 60s. So like she's not picking up her PlayStation and being like, you boys ready to kill some people in Boulder's Gate? Like she's, yeah. uh, she's, she's, but she's a Switch fan. She likes Switch. She has Switch. And he was like, I was like, yeah, it's a shame that like it kind of looks like crap uh, on the, the Switch. And then I think that like the, you can't just like fly from... And there's a lot of the, like, there's a lot of cut scenes like you when you go into Hogsmeade it like cuts out you can't just walk into Hogsmeade like we could right do it does like a little load like, scene where it's like mm-hmm. oh uh, what is it he says it's uh, it's always cozy and hog and nothing cozier than Hogsmeade and I'm like yeah I know you say it every time <laughs> um, <laughs> like a lot like, of cut co- oh, fuck it never mind never mind like we like the worst is when I'll be walking by Hogsmeade but not through Hogsmeade and as soon as I get close he's like I'll be like in the woods and he'll be like nothing cozier than Hogsmeade and I'm like I oh, know shut up <laughs> or so, you um, what, what, what if you're what if it was like even worse like you're like two miles away right and you hear nothing cozier than Hogsmeade nothing cozier than Hogsmeade or if he just like, like mutters it starts Starts like whenever he wants a butter beer, he just starts muttering to himself. He's like, hmm, I sure could go for some cozy hogs mead right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, yeah, I and I asked him, I was like, it, it, I, uh, it sucks for your mom because she's such a huge Hogwarts fan like the rest of us that, like, uh, it's it's a bummer that she won't get to experience the like really pretty version. And he was like, she doesn't care. <laughs> he was like, she's she's 50, it's not like she has like the um the same standards that we have going into it where it's like, Oh, it's gotta be, you know, uh, this frame rate and this, whatever he's like, she, yeah. she still gets to explore the castle. And I did, I watched a video yesterday actually of like a comparison video. Mm-hmm. The thing that makes me the most sad for her because like, yeah, the water especially looks like hot garbage in the, in the switch version. Um, everything else is like fine. It's like fine. a blurrier yeah. version of yeah, the yeah. really nice version. It's like if you took your glasses off, that would be the <laughs> yeah. Switch version. Yeah. But it's that there seems to be a lot of missing people. Like, I've noticed oh, that no. like, in, in the like streets of Hogsmeade, oh, I keep hitting my mic, I'm so sorry. In the streets of Hogsmeade, there was like there's less people just like filling the streets, even if you can't necessarily talk to them. And those people also had voice actors. So like, you'd walk by and you'd hear somebody being like, Oh, the price of blah 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 flowers is just ridiculous. They're Australian uh, <laughs> these days, <laughs> uh, and like I noticed in a lot of the clips of like them walking through Hogsmeade, of them walking over bridges, of them walking through town, uh, that there was just like whereas in the 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 original games, the like the the big fancy games, um, yeah. there would be maybe a dozen people in the street, and in the Switch version, there will be like two. And they're like quest people. So they like have to be there. And so it just kind of takes for me a little bit of like the, I know people's, a lot of people already were not thrilled about the fact that like people didn't tend to like, they said the same things over and over. That was never a huge problem for me because I thought there was a lot of dialogue that just happens around you. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've just like followed people around. (laughs) Like I've, I've full on gone stalker in Harry Potter uh, where like I was like, when I was like, first week of the game super excited playing the game and i would just like stand next to students in the hallways who'd be like oh mcgonagall's giving too much homework how am i supposed to get in quidditch practice and i'm like yeah 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 and then they'd be like let's go and they'd start walking but they'd keep talking and i'd be like let's go and i just like follow them (laughs) you can just do that so like i i feel like that element gets cut out of the switch version which like don't get me wrong i know that the switch is not a playstation 5 like it can't handle 
nearly yeah. as much. And like it wasn't built for that. And the fact that it can do some form of that, it's pretty cool. It does suck that it's not as good as the the what it was built to be, but like I'm glad that there is an entire audience of people who will get yeah. to experience the game, even it, if it's not up to a snuff of what we would want. Yeah, it's like it is cool because like some kids may not be able to ha- they don't have an Xbox or they don't have a, a PS5, but they do have yeah. a Switch and still they they still get to experience a version of Hogwarts. Um, so it it is cool. I was just I was interested because I saw a side by side version. I'm like, holy yeah, shit, it does dude. it doesn't look great when you put it side by <laughs> side by side. And like that's nobody's fault. They're doing their best. I I'm yeah. not I'm not all my love and support to the 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 team who makes these games because like I understand that you're trying to essentially put a, a, a PS5 game on a GameCube, a portable GameCube. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Ooh, this is gonna be a developer <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no it does it it does look a little rough uh I, hopefully this will be for a generation of people who are either too old to care or too young to care whereas yep. the the sweet spot of people who really need that can get it on xbox or or playstation or, PlayStation, or yeah. pc yeah so it was a little off top but uh i it's it's again our opinion you know? It's just our opinion. It's our, our opinion. my opinion is I'd much rather play it on PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, guys, it, it, please let's not gatekeep each other on things. Okay, let's just yeah. let's just all be cool with each other and you know respect our wishes. Like Zach and I like to watch things in dub because I just like to absorb content. I don't really need to focus my full effort and watching something because I can literally have one ear perked to hearing something happen and then i'm like oh fight's happening and then i like go to that or like when they're like having dialogue i still listen to the dialogue but i'm editing a video or i'm doing uploading content or i'm just surfing the web you know so let's not let's not gatekeep saying oh you have to watch it and sub because you are not a true anime fan you're not a true nerd if you don't so (laughs) Yeah, for for me, it's this. It's all of those same things plus the fact that I get to benefit from watching the English dub. Because if if I'm watching the English dub and I'm listening to those voice actors, mm-hmm. those voice actors have booked the job. Yeah, <laughs> and that is that is so hard as an actor is to book the job. So if they've booked the job, that means they are capable of doing that job. And so I can then listen to it. I can. I don't know if this is just an ADHD thing, but like I'm I mimic a lot. <laughs> so like okay if there's ever like a weird noise like i don't you know how like mm-hmm. <laughs> i was this is great i was at a convention once and there was like a line of voice actors at a table and it made me feel so much better about my mimicking because they were like doing the thing and then somebody like boinked their mic by accident and it was like <clears throat> and every voice actor at the table went because <laughs> they just you just kind of yeah. like want to see if you can make the noise if you can like mimic the noise and so like that's how you pick up different techniques a lot of the time is like Mm -hmm. if i'm watching attack on titan bryce pappenbrook is phenomenal an incredible actor and and uh, he recently said at new york comic-con i was at his panel uh that he like for attack on titan they would like go for the like the rawest take the grittiest the grossest sounding take usually if you're if you're doing voice acting you don't want to like speak those kind of noises in the background like when you're talking you get the pops and the clicks and stuff yeah yeah and uh he was like when we were doing it for especially for the emotional scenes he was Mm -hmm. like he was like i would bite my my arm like aaron would bite it so that i could feel the same pain and intensity that he was feeling and you know when when i was like having to cry or like scream i you know i would you know really get into it and like and the director would like was they would talk about it a lot about like we want we want it to sound gross and unpolished because this is this anime isn't like a polished anime it's raw it's emotional and so that's part of the reason it's so stressful is because Mm -hmm. they're over there giving like like full-on authentic screaming weeping biting crying bleeding like they're they're literally blood sweat and tears into this and you can hear it so like again tell me that the English voice acting isn't as good because I attack on Titan is one of my like staples of like incredible voice acting. Um, if you, if you, for me, I'm learning, I can multitask. I I'm listening and, and doing all that thing. And also I just kind of enjoy it. 
I just yeah. enjoy their acting is very good. I understand that realistically, I'm not out here saying that every English dub is better than every uh, original Japanese, you know, with subtitles. There are going to be Japanese artists who do it better, and there are going to be English actors who do it better. One of the uh, examples I always use is Chris Sabat as All Might in My mm-hmm. Hero. The original voice actor is incredible. I love it. But for me, Chris Sabat, especially when he's doing like the United States of Smash, that like one mm-hmm. clip is like my favorite of like, tell me that Chris Sabat isn't out here cooking on the mm-hmm. microphone right now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. And and so I just I had to say it like I know like. A lot of people are like, oh, just ignore them, ignore them. But like, I feel like just getting it out there. And this probably won't be the last time I fucking say this. You know, it probably won't be the last time I have to mention it again. But I feel like just keep keep reiterating it. And keep, when when the podcast uploads and people hear it, to, it hopefully we can just change some people's minds. You know, yeah. They're... Listen to your elder nerds here. The best <laughs> yeah. thing you can do for the community is just be real cool with everybody else. Be yeah. real supportive of what they like. Don't tear them down, but build up what they like. And know that just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not worth being there. Yeah, and and kind of like I'm going into uh, something that I'm going to be tearing down something soon. So uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk about... So you, we were talking before, off air, um, and I was talking about how I was playing the new Call of Duty Mono for 3. And yeah. It's it's getting a lot of hate. Put like a lot of people like it, a lot of people hate it because of like the new the Modern Warfare three. Is that what you said? Yeah, like the new one, the new Call yeah, of Duty. It's getting bad reviews. Yeah, and, and granted, I really think it's just be, people are just. I like it. Okay, I like it because one, I didn't play Modern Warfare two. I didn't like. I played Modern Warfare one and then didn't buy two. I just I just waited because I kind of lay, laid off Call of Duty for a while, and then I bought model for three and i really like the changes and things that have been done to it granted some people say that like nothing has really changed from the last game but i feel like that's what happens when you buy fucking call of duty every time (laughs) it's like buying an iphone every time an iphone comes out i'm honestly surprised that 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 style of um they call of duty changed video games I, I want everyone yeah. to know that. So, uh, and by the way, as a quick so- aside, before we started right recording the podcast, and think in case you ever think we're like above <laughs> what we preach on the podcast, uh, Shane and I got on the podcast. He was, I was like, "How you been?" He was like, "Oh, I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty." And I went, "Grow up and play an RPG like an adult." <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, we do exactly the things that we're telling other yeah. people not to. But it's all it's all fun. Like, it's, it's all fun. Like he knows that Zach I'm doesn't Zach doesn't mean it. Like, it just is jokes. Oh, I and, mean and, it. You should play an RPG like. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> I just, like, no. I told you, like, I just don't, I, for right now, like, with me being on night shifts and shit, like, I don't have, I don't have the energy to, like, be like, yeah, all right, here we go. So, like, and, uh, I, I just finished my first run through of Baldur's Gate, and <laughs> the thing about, like, Baldur's Gate or, like, big heavy RPGs is that, like, sometimes, I, I asked uh, Bryn, my wife, uh, Bryn the other day, I was like, you gonna play Baldur's Gate? You've got, like, an hour or two before you gotta go to bed. And she was like, I mean, I'd like to progress the story in Boulder's Gate. And what, what and I we both died laughing at that because what she meant is like sometimes you can play a game like a big RPG game and play for like four hours and nothing happens. Like maybe you yeah. grind down some goblins and everything, or you like rearrange your, your pack so that like that was a big thing. It's like, you know, you gotta organize your scrolls and like cash out the things in gold. You could easily play Boulder's Gate for an hour, maybe two hours, and not actually like accomplish anything like yeah. i've i've spent half like i've spent an hour just re you get little i i don't think you've played boulder's gate have you no I haven't uh, you get these little like decision wheels so like mm-hmm. you know how in D D it's like you can you can punch somebody you can shoot a spell at somebody you can yeah. throw something at somebody mm-hmm. it basically puts those into little like dials that you can choose from so like when you're in combat you open up your dials and you're like i would like to cast this spell or shoot an arrow or whatever and you can organize them so that you can be like all my physical combat will be over here and all my and you can and it also allows you to put in like specialty arrows like acid arrows or or yeah. uh, ice arrows or potions or scrolls and so i spent like a good hour to two hours just like organizing my wheels so that i would have the most efficient because otherwise it just like randomly puts things places 
So like I was like, well, it would be really efficient to have all my melee attacks over here, all my spell attacks over here, mm -hmm. all my helpful scrolls over here, my combat scrolls over here. And I just kept doing that. And it took me like two hours. So yeah, like I totally get wanting to just Call of Duty is like, I just want to hop on, instinctively react to things and have it last 10 to 15 minutes and then be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and that's that's the only thing. Like, and and granted. Some people have good points, um, and some people I feel like are kind of just nitpicking too much. You know, mm. I mean, how much can you really change Call of Duty with a? In my opinion, how much can you really change Call of Duty without for it to be new? This and, is the same. So, like, I feel like the two biggest companies that that well, I, the two biggest companies in my opinion that that have set this like it needs to be recreated every year. And so as a result, you get like little changes, maybe quality of life improvements that are like small here or there. Mm -hmm. um, I would say Madden and Call of Duty were, were yeah. the people who enforced that like it has to be a new game every year. And that's when if you notice before Call of Duty and Madden really took off, uh, I think Madden kind of set the, the Madden walks to the Call of Duty could run. You know what I mean? When it came to mm -hmm. yearly releases. And then everyone, like, Pokemon didn't release a game every year. Pokemon yeah. would release, like, a two set every, like, three to four years. For and then sure. maybe a third version of that game that was, like, different somehow, but the same. Um, yeah. And then it became Pokemon's got to release every Christmas. Um, and, like, a lot of games followed suit with that. And and it's, it, like, you can hate on Call of Duty. I, I'm not, I I enjoy Call of Duty for what it is. But I find that games like Call of Duty, Madden, things that have like those yearly releases, people have been pay playing those games for years, decades yeah. even at this point. Yeah, they're dedicated. And so it. I'll jump into Call of Duty just to like have fun with it. And sometimes it's fun. Sometimes I have a blast, especially if I'm playing with like you or some friends where it's like, you know, the experience is more us playing together than like winning. Yeah. But like, I, I, I'm glad we, I know you wanted to talk about like, the microtransactions that yeah, come yeah. with these games. Sorry to like, yeah. you know, break the fourth wall. Oh my god, no, you're, you're cool. About it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're cool. Yeah. Um, we were gonna get into like these these games like Call of Duty that have become more of a microtransaction uh, monolith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of, like they, they, that is how they are maintaining these games on a regular basis because they're making more money than than single player RPGs can because they people buy the game and then they buy the skins and they buy the boxes and they buy the loop things and like uh i want to tell a personal story about i was i am a big nba 2k fan uh yeah yeah i i used to play it like 2011 2012 2013 2014 2015 and then i stopped playing it as much i i, I would i would skip years i think i would be like 2011 2013 2017 like um and i recently like last year for two, 2k22 i think i was like you know what i haven't played a, a 2k game in a while it is so bogged down with micro microtransactions now i mm -hmm. bought the game the the like 80 dollar version of the game yeah and then i bought like 20 dollars worth of like the nba coin that you need because mm -hmm. you can't level you can level up your player by getting these coins by winning games but they start your character so deliberately bad that like, hey, welcome to the NBA. You're a level 60 and everyone else is a level 85 minimum uh, with players creeping into the 90s, mid 90s. Like you just get trashed. And if you don't win or have a good performance, you get less coins. But mm -hmm. you can't get more coins unless you win, which you can't get unless you are winning, which you can't do unless you. And so like then it's like, well, how else can I get better? And it's like, well, you can spend money on the coins. You can buy them yourself. I spent $20 on the coin and I, no jokes, $20 on this coin and they were running a sale where it was like, if you buy this, you get double the normal amount. I went from 66 to, or I'm sorry, 60 to 66 with $20, which mm -hmm. means if I wanted my player to get up to like 80, I'm spending in the hundreds now. I know yeah. people who were, uh, who said that they bought the holy shit package, the pre-order like $150 edition that comes with all the stuff. Um, and spent a hundred dollars on coins, and they were able Holy to get shit. their character to 81. And it's wow. just like, I if you enjoy that, if that's your cup of tea, 
I'm not I'm not shitting on it. I think I spend money on hobbies every I spend money on voiceover classes and hobbies yeah, all the yeah. time. I know people who, you know, collect stickers and pins and I know if your hobby if like no shame on how you spend your money at all, at all. If you want to spend your money on that, that is your prerogative. But for me, that is extremely money grubby and and trying to just milk players for every like if I can't enjoy your game on yeah. the sixty dollars that I spent to buy this game, what are we doing here? Um, yeah, it just and so like I I hate microtransactions so much and to the point that when I spent that money I knew it and I was like, but you know what? Same thing. No shame. I enjoy the basketball game, thinking it would bring me up to like level eighty if I spent twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah. Um, nope, not even close. And I I refunded the game. I I was like I lost the twenty bucks for the coins, but I was like, nope, take this game. I because you can like digitally return a game, and I was like, mm-hmm. nope, it's bad. I don't. I, I'm not enjoying it. It's it's actively an unpleasant experience. And I'm playing the story mode. I'm not playing online. You know, right. it's not like it's not like oh, we're gonna charge you more if you want to play against you know Rodney in California or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This is just me wanting to play through the game because one of my favorite gaming experiences is like the the like coming up as a rookie um and then becoming like a champion and like all the cool stuff that like hey you got a shoe sponsorship you got a this thing like you get to be in a movie like that is one of my favorite things uh shout out to tony hawk underground the og (laughs) best sports game with story the campaign of tony hawk underground is still untouched is my favorite sports story game uh but yeah i i don't get to do it as much with call of duty anymore so tell me is it is it also kind of bogged down with those so so like you can play the game you can play the game and absolutely like do fine like it obviously there's skill involved in in the game like reaction time and stuff like that um you can absolutely play the game and like go through and level up slowly but it just seems like it it pushes it pushes ads on you every time you log in. The like, hey, you could level up your your guns slowly, or you could buy the battle pass and mm-hmm. get all these beautiful things and be the cool guy on Call of Duty. You know, yeah, yeah. um, and like, I'm not hating people's game. Like, um, I did spend like twenty bucks on like getting uh alucard from helsing it was an anime uh, character uh to be one of my operators so i was like i was like it's worth it to me because i get to be an anime character in call of duty yeah but that's a benefit that you get that is that's a cool benefit i would pay because it's completely optional but like but it makes you happy which is fine for me if you want to sell me stuff like that like um back when uh injustice came out uh, the fighting game that was like DC Heroes. It yep. was like I didn't get to do it, but it was like if you did a certain pre-order, you got Stephen Amell's uh, Green Arrow voice instead of okay. like the more like they made a a Green Arrow mm-hmm. skin, uh, like from the show with Stephen Amell as the voice actor. I love the show Arrow, so I was like, oh, that's so cool. I would happily pay money for that. Now it was like on a pre-order bonus for something that I couldn't get anymore, but like mm-hmm. I would have happily spent money for it because it doesn't matter, but I like it. That's what I want to spend money on. I don't want to have to spend money on a game once I've already spent money on the game to be able to play the game as well as other people. And God knows part of the reason I don't do shooters as much anymore is because like I stress, it is a stressful and like, this is going back to what I was saying earlier. Like there are people who have been playing these games relentlessly online for years. I mean, it is now a point where it's not like when we first start, when you and I not to like go old school on this, but like when you and I first started playing shooters, we were the first shooters. Like yeah. our generation was the first people we to hop started on it. Xbox yeah. Yeah. and be like, gah, 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 gah. I guess yeah. technically Goldeneye was the OG generation, but that was also us. So I'm but, taking credit for it. Yeah. But like now, if I want to jump into a shooter, sure, I might be put into a room with people who are average players who are or just like enjoying having fun. But more often than not, when I try to play a shooter these days, I get wrecked because I'm out of practice and because literally everyone else isn't out of practice <laughs> i get put in a room and i'm like how do i throw a grenade <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so what's it's, it's kind of weird so like you have this things like as you level up you also gain these like game tokens i guess right mm-hmm. and for a while i was like i'm gonna save these up because like i'll, I'll spend them when i want to spend them 
So I'm like, cool. I'm so like nine tokens. And I'm like, and you have like these things you can like purchase with the tokens, like other side stuff. Yeah. And it's like, Ooh, that's a cool like game card because it's like holographic and like does a yeah, bunch of flashy yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I want that game card and I'll like spend like one token. I'm like, I got nine of these bitches. Sure. And I like, it's like, all right, you bought it. So now to claim your token that you spent, you have to buy battle pass. And I'm like, what hold up why why do you give me the tokens if then i have to purchase battle pass battle pass is 30 bucks but i'm like Ooh, so half the game essentially yeah so it's like i am not gonna do that just to claim these things that should be given to me from just playing the game that's and that's where it gets me that the the big thing for me is is i when i purchase a game i want to purchase the whole game and then yeah. anything extra like your mentality shouldn't be well this game is sixty dollars plus the battle pass which is thirty dollars plus i want to spend money on the you know bullshit whatever yeah. stuff yeah uh, you know new guns new screens new whatever mm-hmm. uh that's going to be another 20 to 30 dollars or as like as often as i feel like spending the the you know five bucks for extra stuff all of a sudden this this video game which is like Again, this is where people come into it and say, we haven't even changed anything. What's the point? Like, mm-hmm. if 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 Modern Warfare 2 is just like Modern Warfare 3, and Modern Warfare 3 is a new $60, plus you have to get the specialty battle pass just for Modern Warfare 3, because God knows there's not just a Call of Duty battle pass. There's a mm-hmm. Call of Duty 1, Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty 3 battle pass. And so now it's like... This is why people get fed up with it because it's not it's not just buying a new sixty dollar game every yeah. year. That that in itself is like, well, you know, it's a burden that comes with getting a new experience, even if it is very similar to the old experience, and it's up to you at that point. But it is now okay. If I want a new Call of Duty, which reminder comes out every year, it's going to be yeah. a minimum of one hundred and fifty dollars. Plus the like little thing, like plus it's not like you're not spending money after that. You're probably gonna, you know buy a loot box here and there you're probably probably going to get a new skin every now and then like so that's a, like a five dollar here a two dollar there and like all of a sudden again you're spending 150 to 200 dollars a year for essentially the same game like i would be pissed too and this is and this is like and and i'm on i'm on both sides like i'm in the middle like i enjoy this game but i also hate the fucking microtransaction thing and i also hate where we've come um i get companies these production companies like video game companies need to make money i really do yeah i get that it, you got to run a business you got to pay people you know, you're paying employees and blah blah blah. but the game was 70 dollars. so if i'm paying you 70 dollars for a game which is more it's 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 20 dollars more than games used to be you know I, I don't mind the $70 price tag as much. I understand a lot of people say, like, that's not what you used to be. But it actually, back in the days of, like, old old school Nintendo, they were, like, $70. And then they dropped but to 16 But the thing of it is, the thing of it is, you bought 50 bucks. You paid 50 bucks or 60 bucks. You had the whole game right then and there. Yeah, that's that's the difference. That's the problem I have. I don't care about spending $70 for a game. Right. I'll spend $90 for a game if it's great. <laughs> I if would the, I like, paid 70 I know... for Boulder's Gate. And I'm like, do I owe you money? <laughs> like that's the thing is like if i know that i'm pers- uh, if i'm spending my hard-earned money 70 bucks but if i know i don't have to buy any extra things i all i do is gotta level up my character i get and have an achievement to get so that's where i i think i'm where i'm showing my age now is where mm-hmm. old call of duty was like i want gold guns what do i need to do to get gold guns you know yeah oh i need to get n- unlock all the camos and get all these headshots right okay i'm gonna make that my objective that all i'm gonna do is, is i want to get, get gold guns for everything and headshots yeah. right now it's 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 like the instant gratification type things like you could level up your character but why would you want to do that you know you could just spend you could you could pay 70 bucks and spend another 120 and get everything you want now yeah, not to mention you'll be better at it, which will make it yeah. better to get those headshots. So you'll get those go- gold guns faster than other people because yeah. the gold guns are still there. They haven't like removed them from the game. Yeah. But what they do is they put it behind a paywall of like, you got to get more headshots. Oh, and the guns that you're using are almost incapable of getting headshots. 
unless you spend the money to get the new games, which which you in in fairness, you could totally do by just playing the game for three or four months while everyone who's already spent the money is getting better than you because they're just getting the, the good equipment and then getting good at the game with the good equipment. Yeah. And by the time you get good at the game, they're already pros and they're tr- like slamming you down like you're, <laughs> yeah. you're like hey guys i just spawned Boosh. hey guys i <laughs> yeah. just spawned again Boosh. like uh um, yeah for for me i think the thing is that uh uh shooter games and and uh games that do this this paywall thing of like they had the potential and still do um the the reason they shot to success so well is because it used to be an achievement thing. And let's be honest, a lot of gamers have ADD. <laughs> yeah. A lot of us gamers are, are achievement based and reward based and stuff like that. So if I was playing Halo and I got five headshots and they were like, kill Manjaro. And then like you, you mm. unlock a thing and, and I'm talking like the old school version of these shooters games. Um, you would, you would get an achievement, which was great. I mean, I know achievements still happen, but something about achievements feel less important. Um, yeah. you used to get an achievement, which was like really cool, especially as like a, you know, praise me daddy, you know, <laughs> just, <laughs> just like, Ooh, I did a thing. I got an achievement. And then you would like, if you get five of these, you unlock a gold helmet or like whatever. Mm-hmm. And so like you would play the game and, and despite the fact that the campaign was never like, nobody ever bought call of duty for the campaign. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. that it was bad, but like you play to play online. Um, and so like you would you would do these you would get these achievements you would accomplish something and then you would get rewarded for it. That's a very that is a formula for making me want to play your game a lot always. But mm-hmm. then it became like, well, you can play but you you're not going to be good unless you spend money right off the bat or you can like play with your friends and get good and then but then like even if you accomplish this thing you're just getting an achievement. You're not actually getting anything. You're just getting the pat on the back. And then if you want to unlock that gold thing, you can pay for the skin or you can like you might be able to get it but it's going to take you five to ten times as long to get it which was already like a hard goal to begin with and now they're putting it in this realm of like well it's possible but it's going to take a long time and it's going to be really annoying or you could just pay five bucks for it and like that's just that's why when i said grow up and play rpgs like an adult it's because like you're getting when i when i go to play i haven't played spider-man 2 yet but it's like next on my list now that i just finished boulders gate there are like a billion new spider-man suits you know how i get them randomly throughout the city i swing and i find a backpack or like i i I do a thing in the game and, and as a result of beating 10 people i get this cool like punisher version of the suit and like that is why I'm I'm gonna play that game for so long. And I understand that like it's it's a money thing. I completely understand it's a money thing. Yeah. That's dumb. Uh I saw a thing recently that said uh video games should be priced based on the hours of play. So like Baldur's Gate is a game where I spend many hours, four to eight hours a day mm-hmm. for like a month. And to be fair, I could have just like streamlined it and just done the main stuff. But like in terms of like I like to enjoy myself, I like to hit the side quests. Right. I have probably two to three hundred hours in that game, and it cost me 70 bucks. Like, and then if I then I look over at Call of Duty and it's also 70 bucks plus the battle pass, plus the online fees, plus the whatever. We didn't even talk about that, which is I can play Boulders Gate offline and never have to spend money. If you want to play Call of Duty online, you're paying already for the online membership and for the game and for the battle pass and for all the other bullshit fees. And that's where they start to lose people. Not in this economy, man. (laughs) Like people don't have that much money to just drop. (laughs) And that's like, it's just like to me, like I don't want to sound like the old guy. It's just like, I miss the days where it wasn't about money. It was more about the experience you want to give to your customers. And like you spend the 60 bucks and you get the full game. And I remember like the original OG Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2s, where like I'd be a sniper and I'm like, I really want the Gilly in the uh, Gilly in the Mist gamer tag. Because it, yeah. it shows that you're like really good at sniping. Yeah and, yeah, and it's almost like a point of pride when other people see it. They're like, "Oh shit, you, you know what I mean?" Yeah, yeah. So like, I like would love to try to achieve to get that gamer tag because it'd be like, "Oh shit, he's he he got the Gilly in the Mist fucking tag. That's pretty cool." Now it's just like I don't know. Like I'm so disconnected 
because like like you said like i'm 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 also older now so my preferences for games have changed to where mm-hmm. like i like playing a good rpg like i'm still trying to finish final fantasy 16 and i love that game i paid 60 dollars for that game but it's given me everything i need to play the game like i can play like i think you come out with like um uh, it's not really a bundle but like to come out with like like a side story later on the game like a dlc you know, dlc yeah yeah they yeah come out like if DLC, you're lucky yeah. like that's the thing is like if boulders gate who i spent 70 dollars on and has given me hundreds of hours and i plan on I'm, I'm only on my first playthrough i plan on playing that through so many times and i think replayability is something that really comes into a factor at our age is like can i go if i spend good hard-earned money on this am i going to go back hogwarts legacy i can go back and play anytime i feel like i'm i i want right. to you know indulge my harry potter side boulders gate is just D D that you can play by yourself because it gives you npcs to do it which is unheard of like that's that's the reason it's so successful is because they managed to capture that lightning in a bottle um mm-hmm. uh legend of zelda tears of the kingdom i can go back and play that if nothing else because it's beautiful but because i can you know the engineering aspect is there i can make new things i can do stuff yeah. i've never done i can i can roam if i just feel like roaming around and beating up little like goblin dudes i can do that like that that is easy to go back to call of duty does have replayability as long as other people are playing it yeah but also again there's that element of like if i go back and play tears of the kingdom which i haven't played in a few months at this point it's going to i'm going to have to like shake the rust off but like i can and I can acclimate to it and then get then then keep playing Call of Duty. If I haven't played it in a long time and then I go back it, like it's good, there's I'm going to get trounced for a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like and that is not a, an enjoyable experience for me. So, like, again, I I will play shooters. I, I'm not saying that shooters are bad, but like for me personally. I just don't do them that often anymore. Because... You just have other things that interest you more than wanting to do that. Yeah, and and I've always been like a tell me a story kind of guy. I love movies, I love TV shows, I love anime. So like a good, well told story will hook me more than anything ever. And like Call of Duty, like you said, is great as like a if we're looking at games like meals, you've got like the Boulder's Gates, the Legend of Zelda's, like those are like Thanksgiving dinner. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's a big, delicious, amazing. You're gonna be stuffed by the time you're done. But sometimes you don't feel like cooking a thanksgiving meal every time yeah. and then you get the the call of duties and i think this is why i haven't is because i think that switch games also fall into that that like bite sized gaming category of like i could play call of duty or like me and my wife could just go play a few rounds of the new mario kart maps like you know mm-hmm. what i mean like they're they're in yeah. that like i don't want to think about it i just want to be reacting the entire time and that's like the microwave meals of of video games and no no shame to either one like they're all like they're all necessary we sometimes we all need a microwave burrito and sometimes we all want that thanksgiving dinner it's n- neither is better or worse than the other it's just situational um but for me i've replaced it with like you know the switch games and stuff like that yeah or i want that big thanksgiving meal i want i would much rather sit down for a few hours and get like a big story you know again spider-man's next on my list after that i'm going to circle back and do god of war ragnarok because i haven't played it since i got a ps5 right. like those are the, those are both fun games like i like the god of war f- fighting style i like the boulders gate turn by mm-hmm. you know turn style which is funny because i didn't like turn-based games before boulders gate um the legend of zelda i want to just like walk through a meadow and kill some goblins with a bomb like you know what i mean like i i want that big in-depth story because and i think i'm getting more of my money out of my gaming for me than i would if i was putting money into call of call of duty yeah there are other people who don't want to do tears of the kingdom don't want to do those big in-depth things and they will spend hundreds of hours playing 15 minute rounds of call of duty that's fine If, if that's your jam like again no shame uh, I'm not shaming you for for spending that money or for spending that time mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. But for me personally, it just feels like they're trying to milk you, my friend, my gamer consumer, for mm-hmm. every penny by putting all the fun stuff behind pay. And you're already paying twice for this game before you have to pay third time for more stuff. You're paying for, yeah. again, the internet access or the, the connection to online gaming. You're paying for the game itself. You're paying for the battle pass if you want anything worth a while. And then you still have to pay money. And it's like, at what point am I done paying for this game? You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to I mean, pay for it and be done. 
it's like it's like if they were like, hey, you could buy Alucard or you could uh, get to level fifty seven or something like that, and then you just get him. I would have gone that route. You know, I would have yeah. gone the route of like, I'll just level up because I've always been that way. Like, I, I'm not trying to sound cheap. It's just like I don't see the point of me paying for something when I can just like earn it, and right. and that's just how I am. And and that's no hate. I'm not shaming anyone who just like who's like who just wants the instant gratification. It's just like. I again, I sound old. I just miss the days of just getting the game and just doing the stuff. Like I just miss that. And yeah, like it should when you buy a game, it should all be included and then anything on top of that. Like we said, DLC. If mm-hmm. if Boulder's Gate comes out with a uh you know, Boulder's Gate tends ends at uh, like a level 12 like in D&D. If they were to tack on like a level 13 to 15 and it was like, "Oh, you're going to go do a side quest to save this person who like at the end of the game was safe, but then all of a sudden they got kidnapped." I would happily spend that money because I've already gotten the full experience. It it's kind of like Super Smash Bros. Uh, they they do DLC for Smash and like mm-hmm. uh, I think I don't think it costs. I I don't remember if it costs money for those packs of like extra players or or whatnot. Yeah. But uh, but when you used it used to be like oh if you uh, you know win the entire thing then you unlock Luigi and if you you know knock people out 50 times then you unlock peach and like yeah there would be i'm sorry i keep hitting my mic uh there would be <laughs> these uh there would be these these like achievables which which made the game fun because you felt like you had the game and then there was all these secrets to go and unlock yeah and for me that was one of the most satisfying things was getting the game and then figuring out how to do it um but like when you have a, a game where it's like you you technically have those things but you have to pay for those things then it's just then it's then what's the point in playing your game like i'm i'm basically paying it's like when you go to disney <laughs> you mm-hmm. pay to go to disney world and then you pay to eat at disney world and you pay to shop at disney world and like yeah like there's the rides and everything like that but like it just sometimes it feels like you're paying for the ple- the pleasure and privilege of paying again yeah, same thing yeah. it's like i'm paying for the call of duty game which don't get me wrong i'm not getting nothing out of it i am getting a game when i can you know have access to that but if i want to do any of the funner parts of the game i have to now pay for those fun parts of the game yeah, it's like yeah. then what am i getting here i'm getting kind of half a game you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and that's like uh i use batman arkham as a as a reference like mm. you can buy batman arkham and play through the game and then later on they came out with like a five dollar dlc where you got all the batman animated characters skins oh sick so i like bought it and replayed through the game as uh kevin conroy's fucking batman animated even though he yeah. still had this even though kevin conroy still voiced batman and right right batman but Arkham. like his the animated series but like it's the animated, animated and then catwoman is also in her catwoman's like animated suit then robin's in his robin suit and then Lightwing. yeah like Lightwing. for me i love old school harley like original harley quinn mm-hmm. is one of my favorite character designs so like i love the tara strong versions of, of that harley but i would love like the arkham versions but the to have her be in like the OG Harley suit, I yeah. didn't even know that was a thing. I would have, I would have paid for it at the time. Yeah, yeah. So the, that was worth it to me because, like, not only did I get the full game, but like later down the road, I'm like, oh, I could play it again, but in like my favorite animated version of Batman. So it was yeah, really and cool. I think there's a big difference between DLC skins that come out after the games come out, and like mm-hmm. as a way of like, hey, you know, if you would like to do it differently, I, I, I understand that skins can be part of that for people like if you unlock this uh you know this thing you get a gold helmet and all that stuff the skins aspect of it i like don't like i still wish they would do like achievement based rewards yeah Um, yeah. it's it's when it's like almost an unplayable game because you have to pay otherwise or like uh, like again with nba i could technically have like grinded my way up but I would have to play 40 minute basketball games, which are actually 40 minutes. I mean, they'll skip over you a lot, but like they're actually like if you want to watch the game, they're actual 40 minutes. And I would have to play hundreds of those getting trashed the entire time yeah. while the game actively shames you for being bad. By the way, if you're bad, you get like a D on your thing. Your coach will be like, what happened to you last game? Like they will be like, you're shit. Why are you shit? And if you get tired of that, which like. <laughs> look man like my boss isn't actually like that but like i can imagine that there are people who get like shit on by their boss all day and are like man that was a tough day i just want to go home and 
you know, live out my fantasy of being an NBA star because, like, reality sucks. And then you go and you play and your coach is like, why do you suck at this? And you're like, you know what? I think I'm just going to call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to keep griping about the whole microtransaction thing. It's just like, I don't know. I just – I miss the old days. And I think that's why I just moved on to just more RPGs and stuff like that because mm -hmm. – because you get more of a Baldur's story. Gate sounds interesting. I've never played. I haven't like really looked into that too much, and I might. I might look into that. Baldur's Gate is so it is really really good. Again, it is it is It is not basically. It is almost letter for letter. They made some changes for the sake of like video game purposes. That they were the designers were like, we can't do this because like here's a perfect example. Counter spell is in the game, which is like when somebody casts a spell, you can cast a spell called counter spell, which cancels out their spell. So if somebody's like ah fireball, you can be like ah, no. Um, and they, they have it in the game, but it works in a way that, like, it is responsive to combat within the game because technically Counterspell can be used on any spell at any point in real d and in, like, traditional d d In the game, they were like, yeah, we had to tweak this because if we were to make Counterspell, like, as it is in actual d d it takes the, the size of the game and doubles it. It literally doubles the... So it goes to, like, a two-terabyte game or something ridiculous like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just like if you if we wanted to do that, you have to we would have to give you the reaction on any spell throughout anything throughout the entire game, and that's just like too much. And nobody had a problem with it. But um, it is basically just it's it is D and D, it, it, but like in a video game form. It's turn based. Uh, you get a party. Everybody has like their own storyline, their own narrative. You get to make decisions. Your decisions actually matter. You know how like video games will be like, oh yeah, your decisions matter. But like in the mm -hmm. end, they kind of guide you towards the same ending. Same ending, way. yeah. That is not the case with this. I can, I can kill somebody who's like a an NPC like quest giver, and it will like immediately annihilate an entire storyline throughout the entire game. At one point, I had a person in my party who I would like didn't like that much. And I like I didn't like her that much, but I just you can leave them in camp. So you have a party of four like D and D, but you your camp is full of like a bunch of. So it's like you have a druid, you have a barbarian, you have a mm -hmm. a fighter, you have a, a wizard, you have a, a whatever. Um, and uh, so I had a person in my party, Lazel, for all my for all my Baldur's Gate fans. She's kind of mean, uh, <laughs> and. <laughs> I so she just would hang out at my camp and then occasionally they'll have like a little marker to be like they have something quest updatey to give you for their like personal quest or for whatever's happening. Um and she had like a quest. So I walked up and I was like, I mean my camp and I'm like, hey Lisa, what's up? And she was like, I think that I should go um take care of this thing because it's very important. And I was like, you know, being the friendly person that I was, I was like, Yeah, go take care of it, thinking like she would disappear for a little bit and then she would she was just gone. She just, it was like, so-and-so has permanently left your party. And the last time I had saved was like two hours before. And I was like, I'll be honest. I don't use you ever. <laughs> I don't like you ever. <laughs> she's she's not my favorite person uh, or character. Uh, and uh, she's just she's kind of grumpy and kind of rude. Uh, and I know people say, like, she actually has a good character arc. I don't know. She left my party permanently. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so, like, again, it was like, it was like, if it's important to you, then by all means, or something like that. And I clicked that, and it was like, oh, okay, thank you for your support. Lazel has permanently left your party. And I was like, the fuck just happened? But again, it had been two hours, so I just, like, moved on without her. And I'll pick up her storyline the next time I play through this game, but... It's it the, like literally like if you choose to side with this person, there will be there are they did like the the narrator. So they have a narrator so that you can kind of like, you know, you walk into a room and she's like, you know, the room is full of buzz and electricity. You can tell that like blah, blah, blah. She she will do different. They did different takes for her depending on like the care, the, whether you're running a good campaign, an evil campaign, like her tone changes. The voice acting in the game is remarkable. They just, there are so many different options that like they, and it, it has genuine effect on the game. Like if you mm -hmm. don't do a thing, then you don't get it in the end game. If you at the end game choose to side with the bad guy, then like it changes everything. If you choose to side with the good guy, you can still make different decisions based on like, oh, I sided with the good guy, but then this person like pissed me off. So I told him to fuck off. Like it, there are so many different branches that you yeah. can go to that it's not one of those games that like your decisions are your decisions, but you also, it all kind of funnels back to the same ending or the same like, oh, this is the same, but like 
that person just wasn't there. No, like there's realistic consequences to what you do and they're harsh with them. <laughs> like there are times <laughs> where I like tried to go back to like a previous area to be like, oh, I didn't know that there was like a, a really cool item that I didn't go get. And it was like, you have to keep moving forward or else. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, fuck off. And then it was like, all right, if you move, if you go backwards, I assume you're abandoning your quest and you die immediately. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, you're abandoning your quest. So you no longer have the magical protection of your like, like the guardian who's like helping mm -hmm. you through stuff and he's like well if you're not helping me then you don't get my protection and then the magical forces tear you apart and you die and it's like oh okay that's good to know <laughs> like it's really <laughs> cool mm. yes yeah, interesting i'll have to check it out i really do i'll have to check it For out sure. you can also cross platform with people so like if you ever oh, like no shit. if you and i wanted to run a campaign together and just like yeah. not have npcs in our party but have them be in our camp like you mm -hmm. and me and other people could form a four-person party um so like if you ever like if you wanted to play on playstation 5 you and i could play together and mm -hmm. then i could just be like hey i've played it before so i'll just like help you make this like not make decisions like you choose the decisions and then i'll come in yeah. and just like wreck house because i know how to play this game <laughs> okay yeah that sounds cool i'll definitely uh consider that uh, there's so many games i want to play yeah um, it just won like a ton of game of the year awards like okay it, i think it got game of the year and then like six or seven other awards for being remarkable Okay. It it's so good. Next list, it's right. so good that when it came out, AAA developers, because this is not, I don't think it's Larian is, who makes it as a AAA studio. AAA studios came out, like the people who make like Assassin's Creed and everything, mm -hmm. and were like, don't expect this to be the norm because this is, we're not going to do this. And, and everyone's like, but they did it. And if they can do it with their salary and their money and their developing skills, why can't you do it? And they're like, hey, shut the fuck up and just play Assassin's Creed, okay? But yeah, it's it's remarkably good. It's, it is a okay. remarkably good game. Okay. Well, I think we can end it there, man. Yeah, man. Um, we'll just cut the whole Boulder's Gate thing, and then that'll just be us talking about, hey, man, like, you want to play Boulder's Gate with me? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, it was really cool. Uh, it was really different. Because, like, we, we gripped about, like, games being yeah we had to get some shitty. some good game credit you know Positive, what I mean? like, yeah yeah so um uh well uh so i wanted to say like uh i actually recently with me having a lot of these production issues um i eventually bought some portable microphones right here in this case so that way i can take the podcast on the go um, and kind yeah. of visit different people because not everyone has like Zach is a voice actor so he has a camera he has the studio set up to be able to come on here and you know have fun with me like talking face like on on the computer but I also would like to go to his house or he could come to my house and we could you know talk in a different setup in a different setting but there's also other people I want to have on the podcast as well that don't have these type of things. So I thought I would invest in the podcast and have these different production items to go on the road and uh, have different guests on. So be, be aware if you don't see me in my nice lit studio with all these fancy things, you just see me on a couch between like two ferns or something like that. Don't be <laughs> surprised. It's, it's a, I'm trying to take this into a different, Per, uh, different way now too um so that way we can get uh more uh more interesting uh outlooks on certain things so if the uh, next couple episodes you see me in a different location don't think like oh what's what's going on here it's uh because i'm trying to get different voices and different things out there um also if you watch JJK, I wanted to talk about this a little bit, but if you watch JJK, be aware that the production of JJK is actually on a stop right now um, because of a decent reason. Um, the production team uh, is going on strike because they are being overworked. So just be aware if you're a big JJK fan, if you notice that it's not, you don't get another episode in, in next week, there's a reason why. So just be aware of that. Um, also, uh, sorry if you listened you were trying to listen last week for another episode and you saw that there wasn't going to be one to get updates on certain things like this i try to schedule people in advance to come on the podcast but i get it we're all adults we have lives to live and things come up zach was very kind i, I texted him last night and was like hey man do you mind coming on and he's like yeah yeah man i got you and and i always appreciate him having free time to come on um, but sometimes other people I've scheduled 
you know, things come up. So if you want to know what happens, like if, if there's going to be another episode or just assume there is going to be unless told otherwise. So if you want to know, follow me on TikTok and Instagram at the nerdy mind and stay up to date. I will let you know right then and there if there's going to be an episode. But if you don't hear anything, just assume there's going to be an episode. But Zach, do you have uh, any like um, do you have any social medias for like your voice acting that people can follow you and like hear some yeah, of your stuff? Yeah, so you can uh, you can follow me on uh, uh, I just I refuse to call it X. I, I'm on Twitter for now. It that might not be for much longer, but uh, it's it's at Zach Krasny Z A C K K R A S N E Y V O, and you can find me on uh, Twitter there. Uh, I'm on Instagram. I think is just at Zach Krasny, Z A C K K R A S N E Y. Uh, that's it. It tends to be like half personal, half professional. Um, mm-hmm. When when you get in for for me, when I got into voice acting, the community is really nice and really kind. So it just kind of became like half professional, half because like I just have a lot of friends in the industry now, and so I do stuff on there. Um, you can if you're if you're interested in anything uh, professionally voiceover, you can visit my website, zachkrasny.com, Z-A-C-K-K-R-A-S-N-E-Y.com. That has my voiceover stuff on it. Uh, Yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. Yeah, guys, if you you are really into like making productions and stuff like that and you want to hire a a good voice actor, Zach is amazing. I've heard his stuff and it's not just me being his friend. He actually is really, really good. And I'm I'm always impressed when he's like, hey man, listen to this. See, See what you think. And I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like you're really good. So <laughs> check them out. I try very hard. <laughs> <laughs> check them out. Uh, give them, show them some love. And guys, as always, stay nerdy, my friends. Stay nerdy, y'all. <laughs>